and we'll laugh at him. We have to laugh at him. He's, uh, We're going to laugh at him anyways. Anytime. Is it, is on? it on? Yes, yes. Keep going. Is, is, it? is it on? Yes. Because we're going to laugh at him anyway. We're laughing at him now. I'm laughing inside at him. Hey, everyone. Adrian from Mario Excellence Canada. You know we love Canada. you, Angus. <laughs> Adrian from Mario Excellence Canada. Philip, Angus, the beef behind the camera. He's holding Coach. it. Hold it tight because the mic will shake. Okay, so we're going to title this video, uh, Philip's U-Haul Moment. Philip went, to so give you a big backstory. Philip went to one of his clients, and the client is a big collector of audio equipment and has decided to downsize. So no, Philip, he's not downsizing. He's not. <laughs> Philip went to his he's house just replacing. to pick up a whole bunch of stuff, which today you will see. Ironically enough, some of it will probably already be sold. But anyway, um, we're going to go through it, and Philip has his cheat sheet. I, I do have che a cheat sheet here today. So for those of you who think that I should have a bit more scripting in my presentation, here's to you. Yeah. Okay, so come closer and uh, Philip will go through the details. Uh, so he had a lot of Pioneer stuff. There is um, the the former, this is this was the top of the line Pioneer player back in the late 90s. Uh, this is called the DV09. So quite a good player. Uh, obviously it does. Um, so the DVD. Yeah, DVD. So these are DVD players. They should um, also play CDs. I think. Yeah, it does CDs. So this is as a CD transport, it's quite good. So well, these, all these, well. it's oh. really well made and isolated and everything. Yeah, real wood sides, and this will go for like next to nothing actually. But as a CD transport, look at that. It's, it's so smooth; you don't even hear it when the door closes. So you don't see this kind of stuff anymore. No, this you don't. Of, this kind of beautiful presentation. It is gorgeous. No, like, and of course, the real wood that looks like plastic because it's so lacquered. Urushi, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was no, called Urushi. Maybe. Yeah. But the wood itself is more valuable than the piece if you took the wood <laughs> off. Okay, what's the next model now? So this is a newer model called the DV37. I don't have dates on this. Uh, it is, you know, a high-end DVD player. So again, not that valuable anymore, but it's a beautiful piece. And you just listen to the way that opens and closes. There's the gearing inside is pretty immaculate. Um, yeah, so this will go for a song as well, but it's a nice, interesting piece because back in the day, Elite, was considered to be quite good. Yeah. I mean, not exactly audiophile-ish, but, but their, as transports, they, as were transports they were phenomenal. Yeah. And they're built like a tank, um, given, you know, they were expensive pieces back in the day. So we have two classics here. NAD 2200, this is the PE version, the power envelope. This is uh, 100 watts per side, very stable, 100 watts into eight ohms. Um, it's a real bargain. You can definitely start off a budget audio file uh, set up with this amp. Um, and they're not too expensive. Um, again, you'll have to consult with uh, our uh, Canuck listings or actually our webpage to find out pricing on this. We haven't quite set it yet, but it won't be unreasonable. It'll be very inexpensive. And this is one of the first Rotel 5 channel amps. Uh, 100, 100 watts into five uh, five channels. Um, what else do I have here about it? Yeah, so 100 watts at 8 ohms into five channels. And it should scale fairly well. Um, it reviewed quite well back in the day. This is probably mid-90s, and the NAD is mid-80s kind of thing. At the very bottom, another, another classic, the Nakamichi BX300. Um, discrete three heads, dual capstan, really good basic tape deck. If you just want to play back tapes, this would be an excellent choice. Um, it was only uh, succeeded by one other version with the CR3A was uh, made to replace this. And that was, you know, so this is the second last Nakamichi, you know, series that they made before they shut everything down. Um, so this back in the day was thousand something dollars. It was not inexpensive. All right, so here are, here are the real goodies. <laughs> uh, we have starting with this. 
Macintosh C31V. This is the uh, their video preamp, but it, of course, doubles very easily as a um, two-channel preamp. It has the remote. Uh, it actually has the sleeve, the wood sleeve. Um, the panel locks are there. I mean, this is the back of the, the sleeve. It's in very good shape. There's actually an owner's manual. So my my client saved everything, including invoices and whatnot for some of the items. Uh, he bought this originally back in, this would have been purchased late 80s, something like that. Uh, it's a very nice, clean, nice sounding Macintosh preamp. Um, and in great shape? In great shape. Uh, so the volume is actually a toggle. But obviously you would use the remote, right? And all these functions are there. So look, laser disc player, we don't have one here. Um, I still have an LDS one Pioneer. Oh, come on. Yeah, somewhere. I had two Pioneer units, yeah. but they're gone. Yeah. I still have some laser discs. Um, so the other thing that he has here is this is an MR78 with the sleeve as well. So that's a classic tuner. That's, that's, that's probably the best tuner Macintosh ever made. It still uh, is quite popular. There's the manual and he has the, this is, I guess this would be the, um, uh, it's a, sure. yeah, it's a cell sheet. And then the service manual. They used to provide service manual, that's amazing. Yeah, because you know, they won't give these out now. <laughs> Uh, the sleeve could use a little bit of oil because it's, but it's in good shape. The 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 the, the metal mesh back here is in, is flat. It's not crinkled or anything like that. Um, the only little thing I can see that's wrong with this, outside of needing a cleaning, there's some bubbling here, and then this 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 uh, uh, piece is actually falling. It's a little bit uh, delaminated. It's just it held on by. It's just held on by tape, actually, the, the original piece. A lot of people will actually take this off and give it a very clean look. Well, so at, at the end of this, we should give them your, your hint about how to clean the... Oh, so... So you can see, if you look at the knob yeah, here, closer. there's all sorts of grime. That's because it collects in the grooves. But so when you, when you, no, no, you no, use gotta, it... You gotta tell them at the end, not now. No, no, I'm saying when you use it, it's usually one position, you're doing this, and this is why you get that. That's that's just dirt and oil and stuff. And you, see, you can see all the knobs over the course of many years will accumulate, um, you know. Dirt and grunge. Yeah. Grunge. And they look kind of filthy. <laughs> they kind of do. Uh, you just never clean them, but you can. There's an easy way of cleaning them. Um, and, and, and because because of this, it actually looks, the knobs look a little bit uh, cheap. They look like plastic, but they're actually all metal which is pretty unique. Okay, so we switched over to... Oh, yeah, let me, let me turn it on. Oh, we're gonna turn it on. Turn it on. Okay, hang on. Okay, so we're gonna power it up. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, the speakers are on, we'll turn off that. Uh, the meter's probably, what, where's the, where's the light? Meter range hold, so maybe the light is out. We didn't yeah, test it beforehand, <coughs> the but the the the, volume, the knobs feel pretty good. That there's no right. So this is the famous MC twenty five hundred. Uh, oops, there's there's two manuals: temporary instruction manual and the owner's manual. Uh, the unit will get service and it'll run impeccably. Uh, this was the workhorse in this amp was made uh, 1980 to 1990 and for 10 years it was the Macintosh amp you would find it everywhere uh, including a lot of industrial installations you know theaters that would be using PA systems um, but everywhere that you needed something super reliable and super powerful this would be it. This is 500 watts into any load. And it has the characteristic Macintosh sound, which is very smooth and rich uh, and relaxed, but with dynamics and kick. 
So you couple this with the JBL speakers or something like that. JBL. JBLs. JBLs, baby, all the way. Uh, yeah, you would have a real kick-ass system. Oh, we should show we should show one very unique feature about this amp. Oh. So, uh, uh, Angus, come around to the back. So first of all, back then, amplifiers were often terminal strips. So you put bare wire in it or very, very skinny spades in there, uh, fan-driven. But here's the thing. So for... Uh, uh, moving installations or service, you'll notice that there's rubber bumpers here and you notice that the rails are rounded. Maybe we should turn it off first. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a good idea. And then unplug it. The so, other thing about it, the plug is weird. What plug? So you pull out, pull, pull, pull the power cord out. Pull oh, this, yes. Yeah. You see how it's not an IEC? Well, it is an IEC. It's just... Um, well, no, it's yeah. actually a regular... Okay, so here's what here's what you do. You see, you can actually. Oh my God, it's heavy. It's can, 130 pounds. You can flip it like this, and now you can either carry it easily or uh, service by taking the front panel off and so on. So you can see there are screws here, right? Very very cool, and I love the dual tone. Yeah, so there are black versions of this, but this one is the I like this better. One. I like this better. Okay, so that's this amplifier. Yeah. <sighs> oh my god. Okay. All now, right. the piece de resistance is a fully working Macintosh XRT20 loudspeaker system. This I think was this the, was the first. This is the first line array. This is the one that the uh, famous Roger Russell. Yes, that's designed. right. Roger Russell designed this. He has a patent on this speaker, um, and there was a version of this, uh, well, a copy of this, sitting in Gordon Gow's uh, uh, living room. Uh, so the idea behind this speaker was to utilize relatively inexpensive drivers to achieve a much greater result. This is why they have so many of these um, tweeters and. It performs like a much, much, much better tweeter. Does the grill come off on the line array? Uh, there is ways of taking this off from the back, so this whole thing. No, just the grill. Yeah, I wonder if we could see the. Uh, yeah, the this, it's it's you'd have to. There, uh, there's screws on the back of this, so oh, you have I to see. take you have to uh, uh, take it. This actually is in two pieces, and you really want to do this now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but oh so, my, see. And it's actually, um, there's, so that's how they would manufacture it. Uh, hopefully it won't fall. Okay, it's not falling. That's good. This is the matching base cabinet. As you can see, back in the day, with a, it would be held on by Velcro and wrapped all the way around. Uh, these are Macintosh drivers. There's an 8-inch mid-range and two 12-inch uh, base drivers, paper cones, uh, foam surrounds. Apparently these are the original surrounds. I somehow kind of doubt it, but uh, Harold claims that he never changed them. They look amazing. They look amazing. The, 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 the foam surrounds don't appear to have any degradation. Though. Which is uh, really it's bizarre. Of, yeah, it's bizarre. So on the back of the speaker, is this the good one? This is the good one. So as you can see, that is the entry point for the speaker cable. And then there's a patch cable, which is one of these things. This is the patch cable that connects the, the column to the base driver. And the speaker, the column is designed to be used within eight inches of the base cabinet. Otherwise it can sound like two separate speakers, but when together, close together, they will, you will only hear one speaker. So one of the tricks is that you have to sit uh, at least 10 feet away or so, then you get the full uh, um, synergy of the base with the um, with the line array. So and when you, it's set up properly, the... the it's the, very coherent. Yeah, the sound stage is like what you would experience at a live event. It's big, because it's a line array, it, the, the sound comes out uh, like a column. It's, it's quite amazing. Oh, and the... Uh, no, there's no... It's over there. Oh, it's over here. So they're, they're, they came with instruction manuals on how to set them up. Uh, there was some sort of invoice. There's this just more, probably a fancier version of the instruction. And yeah, this is a temporary one, and this is the, the final one here. 
I'm going to show them the uh, EQ. So with the speaker comes the EQ, uh, which is this unit here. Uh, this is called the MQ-104. Uh, there's various, it also comes with a capacitor kit so you can change some of the, the way that it works. So the owner had all of this from scratch. I don't think he ever used too many of these. Most of these are still brand new. As you can see, so Wilson learned something from this, I guess, because <laughs> with a Wilson you can get the same thing. So oh, no, with Wilson you get resistors. Resist resistors. Yeah. Yeah. The application is different, but what what's cool about this is that a technician, a Macintosh technician, will come to your house to set up the speakers, measure the speakers, see what the frequency response was like, and then use these capacitors, plug it into the uh, uh, the EQ unit and adjust until the frequency response was right. what they wanted it to be. Very, so, very cool. So there's actually the adjustments are underneath this cover. And then, um, right, this is input, output, and you can actually turn the equalizer on or off. And of course it's powered, right? So there's, there's, there's the state of the art uh, um, power cords from back in the day. And of course, uh, the, the, the owner's manual. So this, my client had everything in here. Uh, and as you can see, there's a service contract. And that's what it looks like on the inside, right here. And service information. So, all right, do you wanna know my XRT20 yes. story? Yes. So I have a story about the XRT20. When I worked at Audio Oasis, uh, there was a, a company next door to us that had their headquarters. It was uh, uh, Steve Stavros' um, uh, holding company, I guess. He used to be the person who owned a, comp uh, a supermarket called Knob Hill Farms. He had a big farm out in, I guess, uh, out, out north of the city, north of Toronto somewhere. And they had a big barn there. And um, he had a very large family. And what would happen is that uh, the barn was next to this kind of open pasture area, a field. Um, once a year, they would open the doors of the barn and he had an XRT20, that, something exactly like this, mounted on the door of the barn. And he used an MC2500 like that and he would play, he would, he would party with it. He, the doors would swing open, the speakers would be playing, it would be like loud everywhere in the field, powered by the Macintosh amp. And he did that for, I, I guess, like 20, 30 years wow. until we sold the system for him after he passed. Mm. So we were very lucky to have handled it. And, and actually, when we put it all together, it sold almost instantly. I never even got to hear it. Well, we will once we test it. Right. <clears throat> now tell them your hint, your, so, your tip. The other cool thing about the knobs So as you can see, this is all aluminum. This is solid. Uh, what I do is I, I, I get a, a, a container, uh, a glass will do. I fill it up with Windex, ammonia uh, a cleaner. I drop these in there. Um, the ammonia technically won't harm any of the, what's in here. And the ammonia, you, you will see very slowly, will take away, separate all the grime and dirt and oil and whatever else is in there. And it, that stuff will just cascade off of it and you're left with a very clean um, um, alu aluminum knob. Actually, what I'll do is that well, when I clean this, we'll, we'll, we'll snap a picture and uh, I mean, post it somehow maybe on. Uh, so here's the typical disclaimer. Do it at your own risk. Yes, we are it. not responsible. <laughs> yeah, we're not responsible. I mean, you know, it's just a moment, but at the same time, uh, uh, it's only for educational purchases, pur purposes that we're, 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 we're telling you this. Entertainment so just, purposes. No, entertainment purposes. Speaking of Macintosh, here's Mr. Macintosh. Oh, there's, there's Danny Brown. Mr. Danny Brown. He owns like a million Macintosh pieces. He has a wall of Two Macintosh. Million. <laughs> Two million. And we're not joking. It's only slightly less than a million pieces. He's crazy. See, so no, no you can't get it back. <laughs> there, there, done. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for now. We will have more uh, later. And uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.